guys, I'm Red Perry, and you're listening to The MBS Show. Hello and welcome to The MBS Show, episode number 38. Joining me today is Daniel Anthony. Hi, Norman. So, Daniel, how are you? I'm okay, still recovering from too many picky pies. <laughs> well, really, you know, I wonder why. Overload of cuteness. And our guest for this week is Red Pear from the MLP fan movie, Rise of the Galiax. Hello. How are you, Red? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm doing, well, a bit tired, but I'm doing good. <laughs> so before we start with the show, we need to ask you four important questions. And question number one is, who is your favorite pony? Um, <laughs> I actually don't get asked this a lot. Uh, um, my favorite has to be Rainbow Dash of the main six. So, oh, any any reason? reason? Um, honestly, I don't really know. I think it might be because it's the first character I liked when I started watching it. I'm too sure, honestly. Thanks, cool, it's cool. So, what's your favorite episode? My favorite episode has to be probably gonna go with the wedding episodes. Part one and two. Yep. Because I, I I just I just love those because honestly, if they had to end that show at the second season, they could have ended it right there. And it'd be perfect. Yeah, it, it would have been it, totally bad. There was it was just the perfect way to end not only a season but an entire series, in my opinion. True, but it would be over too soon. Yes it would. That explains the hiatus. <laughs> so how did you became a fan of the show? Well, Two years ago, I was um, really depressed and like just down on my luck. Felt like everything was just coming to an end and didn't have any any real motivation to do anything anymore. And then, like, funny thing is, it was April first that I was like my most depressed. Even though it's like a day where you play pranks on everyone, but I wasn't breaking anybody. Um, but then April second, I forgot. Um, the camaraderie is supernatural. The people that did that, I've been watching their Son of F series, which is really good. I suggest checking checking that out. Oh yeah, um, damn! I remember them. Yeah, they're they're pretty good. And um, the first episode came, the first camaraderie supernatural came up like as an April first joke, and I hadn't seen it on April first because I was doing things, but I saw it April second. I'm like, this show is pretty interesting. I mean, I didn't even know it was a real show. I thought, I'm like, oh, I didn't even know this was going on. And so I kind of watched it and kind of kept watching it. And then I was addicted, like, bath salts. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, bath salts do bad stuff to you, man. Wow. Some people really can, you know, lock it into their head when they became a brony. I wish I remember that. It looks looks easy for me because it's day of Draper Fool's Day. (laughs) (laughs) True. And what do your family and friends think about your love for the show? Um, my family, um, when we had cable until it got so incredibly expensive, um, we would, starting like last year, I think it was, yeah, last year around this time, we'd, um, we'd all gather around 10 in the morning and watch the new episode together, make a little family thing. You mean your whole family watches ponies with you? Yep. Oh my god, that's so awesome. Wow. So, your whole family. So, that's my father, mother, brother, sisters? Um, my, I have a younger brother. I watch this it as well. Oh, cool. So, yeah. um, they watch it with you. And how did they got hooked into the show? Um, well, they, um, they, take away, they were using my laptop for something. And my my parents are really suspicious because every time they come into the room, I just like shut the laptop closed. Like, oh, there's nothing they thought, wrong. Like, and, they, and they're just like, oh my god, is it drugs? Is it porn? Is it child trafficking? <laughs> uh, and then my dad was using it once, and I had a Rainbow Dash wallpaper up. I have I have a Rainbow Dash cursor right now on my screen. Ooh. Where I got it from? Should help me figure that out. But anyway. And then they're like, is this really it? I'm like, yes. Is there a problem? They're like, uh, they were relieved because they thought it was something way worse. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> I can just imagine the situation. Oh, thank God it's police and not porn. <laughs> Or it could be the other way around. Like, oh my god, why ponies are not porn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. It has an application that way. Uh, but anyway, uh, so how did... Uh, okay, so they found it from you. And how did they watch it or started watching it? They started watching it when uh, when we found out that we had, like, a free subscription. Not free subscription, but we had, like, cable television for so long. And it would be free. To like the end of the year last year and uh thanks to the great netflix gods we got into um walking dead and the new season was starting up and we're like oh my gosh we can actually watch it on television instead of trying to find somewhere to watch it afterwards and then i'm like oh my gosh we have cable that means we get the hub and they're like oh we'll try it out i'm like yes and then we've watched it ever since <laughs> Wow, because of Pony's cable network got more subscribers. Yeah. Yay. That's awesome. So, um, your friends, what do they think about it? My, my friends honestly didn't know till like, September 12th-ish. No. Like, 15th, somewhere in that time frame, because I hadn't told anyone until that time, because I wasn't even sure what it was at the time. I was just, like, unknowingly watching the show and liking it. Oh, okay. But, uh, Did you feel like you're the I, only one? I, I I felt like I was the only one, and then I realized that I wasn't. I'm like, there's a term for this and everything. Awesome. And then I, like, made a DA post and everything. Wow. Yeah. And then I converted a bunch of them as well. So most of your friends are on DA then? Um, They're not on DA, but they're, um, like, real-life friends. Like, I... Honestly, I didn't start doing anything in this fandom until recently. Okay, that's interesting. So you infected the whole family and friends. You're a, I love how Bronies use the word convert. Convert is such a racial term. We should just call it infected. It's just infected. <laughs> yes, you have been I infected. I use the term Brony evangelism. Okay, anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is news time. And in today's news time, Hot Topic are selling Rainbow Dash headphones. Everyone here at the MBS show loves music. And how can we make it 20% cooler? Why, if we listen to our music using the My Little Pony headphones by BioWorld. Yeah, why not? It For looks... a second, I thought you meant BioWare. <laughs> Wrong company. Anyway, it looks like the Hot Topic at the Thousand Oaks Mall in California are selling My Little Pony team headphones. And by the looks of it, you can only get them at the store in California. Links can be found in the show notes. So, guys, uh, how many of you have seen the headphones? I have. Um, I I actually think I have. I saw the uh, the uh, ear earphone things because I went after uh, yes, seeing a movie at my mall and I picked up a derpy because it was like middle of the day. No one was at the mall. I'm like, I'm gonna go. And my mom was with me, and we were like, oh, let's just go to Hot Topic and see what's there. I think we were going to pick up a meatloaf shirt, because we were going to see him in concert. Oh, awesome. Wait, no, we did see him in concert. Why did I say it like that? Uh, <laughs> it's we're cool. going to, but then like, uh, it's only meatloaf. <laughs> so, you've seen the headphones there? Um, yeah, I saw it at a glance, um. From what I saw, they look pretty neat. Hmm. But there's like a thing of glass between me. Because from what I heard, those headphones are really hard to find. Yeah, um, actually, if you go to like, well, most of the stuff is hard to find online, but as I found, when you go into the actual Hot Topic, which is sometimes a hard thing to do, <laughs> um, uh, you can actually get them there like they had about five of the vinyl derby figures oh, okay. which is strange because there are none online yeah because uh, we here in Malaysia don't have hot topics uh, so we have to get them online but I don't know I mean, from what I heard people talking about the headphones are really hard to find and not all of the stores have them hold on I'm not sure I, I think we do have hot topic in Malaysia do we? 
Yes, we do. And probably not where you are, but um, yeah. Wait, hold on. Let me just give it a chance. I think we do have a hot topic in Malaysia because there was a discussion in my class about it. Okay, you, you go look for that first and we talk about the headphones. Yeah. So, because, I don't know, I mean, the headphones are, what, $29.50, if I remember right? And yeah, something like that. I don't know, I mean, with me and headphones, um, it's kind of iffy because I bought this cloud headphones it, it was Marvel branded with the Hulk on it and it looks cool um, it sounds great but it's uncomfortable as buck when I wore them should be like you know I don't care if it's uncomfortable I'm gonna wear it with a heck of it really I mean in public I'm in the studio I wear the studio headphones but in public like come on let's show off some swag you know, that's kind of thing I'm I mean really I better be comfortable than uh, showing off swag, man. It is swag. But I want to be comfortable at the same time while showing swag. So anyway, um, Hot Topic Malaysia, do we have it? My internet is slow. Uh. It's been very, very slow right now. I don't know why TM likes to troll me like this. I thought you found it and wanted to have a say in the matter. Oh, you. No, because I, I, I remember we had a conversation about this in class because my lecturer likes to use Hot Topic as a reference for uh, pop culture. And then she mentioned something about Malaysia, and some of my friends said they bought Hot Topic stuff. I don't think they went out of the country just to buy Hot Topic stuff. So. I didn't went out of the country. It came to me. <laughs> no, these guys don't even know how to print ATM cards, so... Uh, I don't think they use online transactions for that matter. I got no idea, and I don't want to say anything stupid. So anyway, uh, Red, do you think you might get the, those headphones? Um, I might if I have any money. Yeah, okay, cool. Because we Fair want enough. somebody to review them. Because um, I've seen the stats here and it's not bad. It's a 40mm power drive, magnet type, any store pick. Oh god, I don't know this term. Um, it's um, for full specs, it's in the show notes. So go there and look. And with big numbers and all this, it looks fancy to me. So, Dan, one last time before we move on. Hot topic in Malaysia? Yes, no? Come on, Google, don't fail me. Uh, they said, uh, what, what it says here is apparently there is one in Orutama Mall. And that's about it, then? Not much about it. Nah, come on, wait, 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 wait. Want to have cool merch from your favorite brand. Let's share the voices to bring glamour kills and hot topic to Malaysia. Okay, looks like it doesn't exist. All right, move on. Okay, and moving I on to the it. next topic. <laughs> yes, you do. You fail. Anyway, um, why don't you take the next one to redeem yourself? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Discovery Press reports My Little Pony Friendship is Magic Season 3 is popular. That's not a word. Sherlock. You know I have to edit that, right? <laughs> you know I have to edit that, right? Right, fine. It's uh... been a week since we had a fresh dose of ponies in our life. And according to Discovery Press... My Little Pony Friendship is Magic marks its best ever series premium. It looks like all the bronies are, bra- are back in full force. On a side note, Discovery Press also reports new series Little's Pet Shops makes best ever premium for any original series on the network. It looks like some of the bronies are going to be fans of Little Pet Sh- Little's Pet Shop now. Be it. Links can be found in the show notes. So, how many of you are hooked on Little's Pet Shop? I want to talk about ponies first before we talk okay, about that let's one. Go, let's, go, let's go have a look at that. I mean, we already... <laughs> had quite a boom last week discussing about season 3 we have so much to talk about true I don't know I mean the whole thing with the show being the best series to premiere I mean we have been waiting for so long and to get fresh ponies is good definitely agreed but I don't know the numbers and figures but it seems that we dominate the hub when it comes to ponies I mean, we've already broken the viewership records once for The Hub during the season finale. I'm waiting for their report to show if we did it again for the premiere. I have a feeling that it might have happened because during the hiatus, I believe that the fandom did garner some momentum. More bronies might have got picked up because, you know, people start showing and showing episodes in other people's faces like I do. And I think in the end, people would have probably gotten a bigger audience onto the live streams for the... Not live streams, but The Hub in general for... The season premiere. What do y'all think? Do we have a shot at breaking the record again? Red, you still... Uh, you have cable. What do you think? Were you super excited with popcorns and all? 
Or was it too early for you? Oh. Yeah, I had popcorn. She did pop it. Well, the difference is it's night for us, and we we have to we can get everything ready. For them, it's early in the morning, yeah. and some of them watch at seven in the morning. So mm. wake up in your snuggy, go sit on the sofa, and turn it on. After it's done, go back to sleep. <laughs> That's what I would do. Anyway, uh, well, um, poppy, ponies are popular, and well, what can we say? We're still watching it, and we're happy about it. Moving on to Littlest Pet Shop. Yes. Papi's best pet. Uh, let's talk about that one now. Yes. Um, so, before we start, who here wa- has watched it? I have. Red, have you? I have not. Okay, I have. And Red, for you, are you interested in taking a glance at it anytime soon? Oh yeah, I'm very interested. I'm just so busy. So very, very busy. Oh, okay. I don't know, I mean... It's genius of them to put this show after the ponies because uh, after your dose of ponies, you'll be hanging out in the live stream and thinking, should I watch this? Hey, why not? Since it's live streaming and I got nothing to do. And most of the crew that works on Pet Shop are from ponies. So that's awesome. Yeah. I've been actually, since I follow Peter New on Twitter, because what Brony doesn't, but yeah, he's been like... You know, check this out too. This is pretty sweet. And I'm like, oh, I need to check that out. And every time I see it, I just get mad because I haven't seen it yet. I'll give you to a link later on the show. I'll give you a link. <laughs> yep. It's a two-part premiere, nice and long. And it is, okay, basically, I don't know about the previous generations of Littlest Pet Shop, but they look similar to the ponies and I think they're exercising now probably the pony plan on that. It's, it's got my attention on the first episode. Because it was a very well-developed plot. And I learned something new. That if I want to sabotage an event in the future, I'm just going to stick a notice there saying free iPads for everyone who enters. <laughs> oh. Okay, that was a bit of a spoiler. But never mind, you watch it and enjoy it. <laughs> anyway, um, yesterday... Yes, Pepper Clark is best pet. What, what now? Pepper Clark is God, she's the best. Uh, anyway, so um, the way they're showing the pet shop is... They take the last episode from last week and put it in the slot that's this week. And the new episode comes after that. So you'll have a flashback episode. Not really flashback, but you have a previous episode for the first half an hour. And you'll have a new episode in the second half. So basically, it's kind of cool if you don't want to watch it uh, today. You can watch it next week after Ponies and then um, go do something else. I might do that. Yeah, well, if you have the time. It, they put it in a very convenient place, and I really can feel it has attract bronies written all over it. You know, it's like, get the bronies to watch this, because, you know, I think after the launch of My Little Pony, and I've noticed this in toy shops around Kuala Lumpur, and it's like, the pony shelf is selling much, much, much better than the Littlest Pet Shop shelf, which is often right next to it. Uh, well, the Little Pet Shop has blind bags in Malaysia we don't have pony blind bags here problem is with the Pet Shop we got no idea what we're looking for right now yeah that's the problem because I don't know I don't think all of them have names so yeah basically there's oh number 291 number 354 number what is this? <laughs> this is dog number 9 get it? K9 uh, yeah, have you seen number 12? she's so cute and like, what? okay anyway let's move on let's move on let's move on so Lots and lots of Pinkie Pies. This is definitely the first, so the first, um, you know, bite-sized episode of season three. So, as a starter to season three, what do you think of, you know, a Pinkie Pie episode opening up the first set, first set of, you know, bite-sized episodes? What do you think of that? I find it strange that the hub would want Pinkie Pie to go first. I think it's um actually a pretty good move on their part because Pinkie Pie is kind of like spokesperson. Spokes pony oh. <laughs> Giggity. for for the hub and everything. Like um along with oh, um, Rainbow Dash. Mm, yeah. Yeah, rarity and Apple Jang in Flash I don't get much air time. Yeah, they really don't. Spokes pony time or whatever you call it. Yeah, basically because <laughs> uh, because Applejack has a farm to run and Rarity has a business to run. They don't have time to do do two promoting like this. Yeah, that's true. Pinkie Pie, 
never know. That one that was on the cover of the game, that's probably not her. Probably one of her photo stats or something like that. Oh, you. So we start off the show by Twilight turning an apple, trying to turn an apple to an orange. Applejack would be happy with that. Classic joke. I know, Apple. Applejack would be happy with that. Come on. You can double up business, where you can turn a bird into an orange. So if that thing goes wrong, and let's say you fire it at, like, I don't know, something big. I don't know, but it looks like a Pac-Man. Yeah, the, 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 the frog that turned the orange became like a Pac-Man. I don't know, I mean, Pinkie Pie is so random. But um, just this last week, a lot of us were praising the animation quality of this episode. Um, okay, I don't like to say that I got a bit discouraged, but this episode had a bit too many obvious reused um, animation schemes. I mean, I could expect that it was going to happen, but some of them were really obvious. I mean, if you're talking about Pinkie Pie, you, you have to animate about, what, I don't know how many are there on screen. Yeah, there are, too, there are tons of them, but the thing is, I believe, okay, there were too many, uh, how do you say, obvious ones. I mean, they did some, they did a lot of scenes with it done very well, like it's concealed. And you, you know, you, if you, you can only see if you look hard. Like, I watched it twice. Some of them only saw in the second round, but I could see some of them on the first go. They were very obviously recycled from somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really mind that, really, because if you're going to make an in-joke with Pinkie Pie, um, it's no problem because, well, Pinkie Pie, she breaks the fourth wall and all, so I don't find that as a problem. I mean, I'm the kind of person who takes this show a little more seriously than a lot of other, spe- other people do, is that when I watch it, I treat it like a, car- I like a, a TV show that is almost like a live-action TV show. I think, um, you know... How I Met Your Mother, Modern Family kind of level kind of TV show. I treat it like that. So to see recycled vectors, it kind of kills the mood for me, but I don't know. Rick, what do you think? Um, I honestly didn't really notice many reused animations because animation cycles, like, obviously the trot cycles always reused because it's kind of have to be reused, but yeah. most of it I didn't really notice because I had to watch it Really quick, and then have to go do things the entire day. Yeah, but I'm probably gonna go back and rewatch it again. But I did notice some, but I didn't think that much of it. Yeah, I, I would agree with that too. And moving on, I mean, I'm an overanalyzing person, and of course, uh, we look at the next few parts, like the uh, ending, especially how they resolve this. And I think this one really wow, developed the narrative from the start to end, like no middle really. Uh, well, the middle was basically going to the mirror pond. And what do you think of the mirror pond? I like the mirror pond. I want to go to the mirror pond. I don't care if I block stuff with stone. I bring some TNT with me. <laughs> no, I like that pond. I'm serious. And I would be, I would, I would be the person who would jump in there if I knew about its existence. I don't know. It's kind of dangerous because oh, how does it work? Does it, it work on dangerous. emotions or what? Because um, Pinky Boy was thinking of having fun and most of her clones were thinking the same way too. Yeah, I know. The thing is that I'm the type of person who likes to be in a billion places at the same time. You know, I commit to 101 things and at the end of the day, I'm like, oh, wait, crap. They're all happening together? I'm sorry. And sometimes I end up cancelling everything and I'm staying at home. So, you know, I'm, I'm probably the kind of person who would just dive head first into this kind of pond, for that matter. And I could, I could relate to this episode so well. The thing is that um, in the middle, when you notice that Pinky was going out of control, I mean, the Pinky's were going out of control. There were so many of them running around. I actually predicted a Paris Pride ending. Like, you know, they tear up Ponyville and they need to be sent off somewhere. Yeah. Huh. But in the end, they got sent back to the pond and then the pond got sealed up. Like that, I didn't like the sealing part, but heck, it had to be done. Because... So, uh, sorry? Because you wanted to jump into it. That's oh, why. So. Yeah, you know, I can go inside and I can duplicate myself a hundred times and push the rock out. Ugh. And uh, basically... The other part that I also saw and uh, enjoyed is the part where they decided to do that test. Now, how many of you freaked out of the face? Oh, God. That G3 <laughs> the... face. That G3 face. Sorry, Red, you are going to say something? I thought that was the funniest thing. <laughs> I freaked out. I was like, wait, 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 wait. I had to rewind it and I'd look at it. I'm like, oh, God, Pinky, Why? I, I've been reading a fanfic called The Third Generation and oh my I, I, I would imagine them looking like this in the, in the G4 world that'd be funny as hell yeah that'd be stupid and um 
I I I, th- I thought of the whole thing it was actually really genius, and I could relate to Sad Pinky. Yeah. Sad Pinky is adorable. Funny enough, did you guys notice that her mane wasn't down? It wasn't. She's not in a state of depression. She's just sad. Yeah, I mean, you when you're sad, you're depressed, and she was depressed, and she was not. Um, okay, maybe not. That was a state of abandonment to put her in a straight mane. Although I expected her to go back to straight mane. If they straighten out her mane, it would be a nice shout out to the fans because I don't think I think you know if you straighten the mane, only the fans would really know what straight mane on Pinky means. <laughs> it's either cupcakes or sad. Really, we want to bring that up again. Uh. No, because that's fan and I mean, straight mane Pinky is the one that's in charge of that weird ass thing that happens in basement. Uh, I don't know. I mean, in this episode, I see a lot of callbacks to the previous uh, seasons, like. You know Mr. Bear? He's hanging out with yeah. Fluttershy, having tea. Oh, that was hilarious. Yeah, and cool. if you notice, uh, his pinky finger, it's up yeah. when he's drinking it tea. Is? Yeah. Yeah, oh. it was. I mean, it was so cute. Yeah, and they had fancy pants in there, too. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah. Fancy pants is in Ponyville wearing a bowler hat. What the heck? Yeah, and then pinky comes. And then, like, the force of all these pinkies being able to break the fourth wall. Is my tablet piece going to break or something like that? <laughs> oh boy I don't know I mean um, we've talked about it and okay who here has read that one fanfic called Pinkie Pie Watch Paint Dry um, there is a I have not heard of it yep there is and that fanfic wow it's pretty cool Um, if you don't want to read about it you can listen to Mike the Microphone read it to you do you have an inkling oh. that this episode could have been based off that? um not really. I, I don't know how scheduling works because um, some of us might know that the hub or the writers for these ponies are not allowed to read any fanfic. Oh, they're not? No, they're not. They're not allowed at all. I thought they're. I thought they're not allowed to like um, you know di- disclose disclose content. I didn't know they're not allowed to read fanfics. No, they're not allowed to read any fanfics because uh, I think it could be professional reason <laughs> or. Is it? Hmm. What's it? affect their opinion on the show kind of thing? Mm, no. It's not that. Because the thing is, well, once they read something and they find it as a good idea and when they, when they try to write something... They might come back, is it? Yeah, they might somehow use that accidentally. Let's wrap it up. Pinkie Pie writing Legend to Celestia. That was good. I mean... Pinkie should write more. It follows the theme like for last... Um, it follows the theme for last season, so I mean. Well, the first letter of season three, and you know, it's written by Pinky. Oh, you're a Pinky lover, you. Yeah, I'm such a Pinky lover. I mean, it's <laughs> this episode really it just got me straight in the heart. It was so good for me. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, anyway, let's uh, wrap up the. What? Sorry, what did you? I don't I mean for this week's episode. It's kind of fun, but. Next week's episode is going to be about bullying, and huh, I wonder how they're going to handle with that one. Dun, dun, dun. And I don't think so. The main six are going to be in this one. I think it's the CMCs. So pretty fast, we're getting a CMC episode. So, um, I Daniel, think the is there. People like the CMC. True, but more, not all. So anyway, um, how out of five, what do you give this episode? Four point five. Oh, I thought you would give it a max. No, the, the, the point 0.5 is because of the recycled vectors. Eh. What about you, Red? I give it a 4 because I don't do decimals. Giggity. Fine, Red. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to go... <laughs> I'll, I'll have to go with Red because um, I kind of agree. A 4 is good for this one because of all the shout-outs they give and all the inside jokes and... Uh, visual gags that they use. Yeah. So anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is MLP Facts of the Week. All of these informative facts can be found at twitter.com slash MLP Facts. Did hey. you know that King Sombra has a red horn that curves and it's smooth, unlike the other pony horns? I'm not sure. King Sombra is a pony himself, but yeah, that is an interesting horn. Yeah, and I don't know. It can regenerate and it can, like, go inside and do stuff, you know. It just lands on the ground, it gets absorbed, and everything turns black. True, true. Th- that is strange, that is strange. 
and evil. And did you know before the animated series popped out, My Little Pony was called My Pretty Pony? Yep, by Bonnie Zachary. Yeah. That was pretty shocking. Like, why the name change and all? Probably for copyright reasons. And has robot it. That too. Okay. And for you grammar Nazis out there, did you know I could care less about the dress when the actual phrase should be I couldn't care less about the dress? Oh my gosh, I hate when people do that. How did I not notice that? <laughs> <laughs> so are you a grammar Nazi in a way? No, it's just like, not really, but just that phrase just grinds on me so much. It's like, if you could care less, then you care a bit. So you do care. But she has to care. She's wearing it to wherever she's going to start tearing. That's not a word. Yep, so, you know. Damn. Oh, sorry. Language. <laughs> yes. But anyway, um, I didn't notice it, but I found this amusing because I know a lot of grammar Nazis out there. I mean, that line was a bit weird, you know. I could care less about the dress, bang the table. Yeah. I couldn't care less. Huh. But I think it's for musical purpose, to make it sound good. You can just put, I can't care less. <laughs> I can't care less. Uh, I don't know, I mean, for you grammar Nazis out there, debate about this. It's going to be fun. <laughs> and... War... And those are MLP Facts of the Week. Um, you can find them at twitter.com slash MLP Facts. Go! It's fun. Anyway, moving on to the next topic is guest time. And our guest for this week is Red Pear. So, Red, having fun yet? Um, yeah. I don't know. I I seem to find myself a bit boring right now. <laughs> I find everything I do boring. Oh. It's fine. <laughs> well, that says a lot about me. <laughs> okay, anyway, so welcome to the show, Red. So, um, mind introducing yourself to the people who might not know who you are and what you do? Not at all. Well, I'm a self-taught vector artist. I'm on the MLP Fan Film Rise of the Galaxy X team as the lead vector director. I don't know how I know the job. And as well as on Philly Games as a background vector artist and... Now on Bagal Bronies awesome. as an artist. So let's move into Q and A. So you said you're a self-taught vector artist. Um, what programs do you use? I religiously use Inkscape. I use Inkscape. Yay for Inkscape! For okay, Inkscape. So how long? Um, how long have you used Inkscape? Um, I've been using Inkscape for making me think on this one. Um, June. Of last year. Oh. Awesome. So, like... No, do you know this year? Oh. I'm looking through your gallery right now, and... Wow. Have you improved in a short time? Yeah. So, um... Before that, I see you draw with... Color pencils and crayons... No, not crayons. Um, color pencils and pencils. So, yeah. um... Moving to the digital world. Is it hard for you? Um, it is somewhat hard for me. It is somewhat difficult, but I still do pen, pencil, paper. Yeah, cool. Like all, all my all my stuff is. I usually tweet about tweet like a picture that I'll like have drawn in class, or just on the fly, and then I'll vector it later. Ah, okay. So when you draw most of your art, because I'm looking at one picture right now, and it's. Shining Armor, Sheepish Green Vector. Um, it looks really good. So do you did you draw that one first, or did you kind of trace around the original art? Oh, that's actually... Uh, that's, um, <laughs> that's one of my stock vectors that I did. I haven't done one of those in a while. Oh, stock vectors. What? Meaning... Meaning, like, you take a screenshot from the show, and then vector a certain character's... Like a character's facial expression, or an object, or a background, oh. or the whole scene, so that people can use it for like stock images. Like they can like. use that for whatever they want. So you did it from scratch. Pretty much, yeah. Wow, because um, I'm looking at this 
season three spoiler strict C. Um, it looks good. Yeah, it's um. What I usually do is I open. It's kind of from scratch, but it's not really because I'm still tracing over the original image. So like, I'll take the screenshot, open up the PNG file because JPEGs are the worst mm-hmm. in the world. I open up the PNG file and it's in there, and then I can edit over it with the pen tool. So everything is done with a pen tool? Yep. Ah, okay. Um, I'm going to give most of the Inkscape questions to Dan because I got no idea how to work Inkscape. Really? Uh, oh, you're an uh, illustrator guy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm, not a ve- I'm not a vector artist myself, but I use Inkscape to do whatever vector work I have to do because I don't like making high-resolution PNGs and having them take up so much space and taking an age to open. So uh, basically, do you draw with... Uh, do you prefer to draw with a mouse or with a tablet if you have one? Um, I do everything with mouse. I don't have a tablet. I don't have enough money for it. And it's honestly just easier. Mouse is easier than tablet? Well, it seems like it for me because, like, whenever I have to, like, sign... When I sign for my driver's license and I have to sign for, like, if I use a credit card or something, my my handwriting's already atrocious. My signature is just god-awful and... Whenever I have to do it on, like, the ballpoint, the, like, plastic pen thing on the plastic screen, and it's, like, so, like, hard to... It just slips around everywhere, and I hate it. Uh, you don't have the friction of pen and paper? Yeah, you don't have like the that? friction pen to paper. And I'm like... So, so you basically, where you go, a lot of those places are now equipped with, um, you know, those pressure-sensitive signing boards. They don't do it with pen and paper anymore with all the credit card signing? They do not, actually. Hmm, that's interesting. They don't have that here. I mean, they have a couple of shops with it, but not many shops here have that. Oh. Interesting. Do you prefer to save your files in AI format or SVG format? SVG. What's the difference? SVG can be opened in uh, every vector program. Oh. AI can only open in those that are compatible with AI. So wait, if you save your file in AI in Inkscape and... As far as I know, you can open it in Illustrator, right? So if... Yes. Yes, you can. You... I'm trying to think of this. Um, if you carry it over to Illustrator and save it there and carry it over back to Inkscape, will it still open? There might be some loss because if I'm not mistaken, Illustrator has some fancy extra features and stuff that Inkscape might not have. I'm not that deep into vector art, so I wouldn't know. I'm only in very basic levels. So if that so what happened is that if you lose something you just lose if you go into very fancy stuff. If not, if it's basic uh, paths and you know points and paths and anchors, I don't think you lose anything. Oh, oh okay. But SVG, if I'm not mistaken, SVGs are smaller. Yeah. All right. So that's done with the Inkscape questions. Yay! Inkscape questions done. So let's talk about this movie I've been hearing about, Rise of the Galiax. Oh, ga- yes. ga- Galiax? Okay. Uh, well, Galiax. Ga- ga- how do you say it? Because I'm bad with English. Galiax. Like. Galiax. Ah, uh, I guess. Uh, I'm not uh, very. I'm not very good at English either. <laughs> I speak it. Oh, my. Okay. So it's ga- Galiax. And ga- you're particular about grammar. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we all are. <laughs> I'm Asian. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Anyway, um, so what's your part in the movie? My part is basically doing, basically like, uh, I have to get an example from my gallery because I can't think straight. It is late for you, um, 1am for you, right? Um, oh, yeah, I guess it is now. Um, what I usually do is, uh, like, the promo arts. It's drawn by my good friend, Josh. He's the uh, artist for the show. No, not the show, the, the film. So he does all the art, like, he did all the art for the animatic. It yes. was all done by him. Oh, cool, because I'm looking here, and you have a lot of uh, known people in this um, project, like David Cozeta or Base Beast, and also you got Rina Chan. You have, a lot of yeah. good, you have a lot of people in here. Um, we actually, I'm not sure if... I have to check the Tumblr myself because I'm bad at things. 
Um, we have, yeah, it doesn't list them on here. We have Rev as Discord. Rev. Is he the he guy doesn't. that play Discord in Epic Warp Time? Yes, he is. Awesome. So, um, could you tell us more about the movie? What it's all about and when do you expect it to be done? Well, basic basic summary is it's like four, five years after um, The Royal Wedding, which is the season two ender. And Princess Cadence and Shining Armor are expecting their first foal and they need a new place to live. So Princess Celestia takes the um, the old castle in the Everfree and kind of builds it up again, but as they're doing construction, Spike falls into a hidden chamber and they unknowingly release Nightmare Moon Spirit. Oh. Is this, does this happen to be the same castle where the elements of harmony were found? Yes, it is. Ah, oh, alright. And um, they find, they Spike eventually brings it back and they find out that it's where Luna was actually possessed by Nightmare Moon in the beginning. So then, things happen that I don't know if we have worked out yet. Um, yeah, and then what happens is that uh, Nightmare Moon comes back, then Discord comes out of nowhere, and then, oh, well, now he just comes out of nowhere. He teams up with Nightmare Moon. So he just has to get out of it. <laughs> Yeah, he just he just gets out of it somehow. We're still writing. I don't know how it happens. I don't know how far along we are in writing. One does not simply explain how Discord gets out. <laughs> I'm not the writer. I'm the other guy. Don't kill the messenger. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. Um. So then they just they team up with Chrysalis. So it's basically like these three evil people, the three main evil villains from the past few seasons. Mm, okay. Not including uh, King D- Donut Steel or Sombra. <laughs> oh, King Sombrero. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, cool. I mean, he, he was not invented yet, so I can understand. Yes. No, he wasn't invented yet. Well, he was, but everyone thought it was just a really, really bad OC. <laughs> 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 well, he sure acts like one. <laughs> so, um. They, sorry? They, they team up together in a group, and then. Eventually, Nightmare Moon possesses Celestia. So the spirit of Nightmare Moon possesses Celestia and Luna at the same time? No, actually, um, it doesn't possess Luna again. It's just Nightmare Moon becomes just an essence in itself. Wow, okay, that's interesting. You mean its own incarnation? Yes. So Luna and Nightmare Moon coexist. Okay, I, I think we well, need to stop here because I don't want to spoil the story and things are getting really interesting. Yeah. So well, I'm um, just trying sorry? to figure this out right now because this this could be wrong. I... Oh, you're gonna get so much hate if you're oh, a prediction is wrong. I could be. I'm gonna get yelled at by the director <laughs> <laughs> and the fans. Like, what the hell, man? I thought you said they were friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let, let's stop it there before you I get fired or something. It's coming soon. <laughs> so anyway, um, do you know when the movie is going to come out? No. Oh. Okay, so, um, how long... When's the expected launch date? Yes. Um, the expected launch date last time I checked was, um... <laughs> um, like, this time next year? Oh. oh. no, wait. It was summer 2013. That's probably not gonna happen. <laughs> because we're still writing, I think. Hmm, so you guys are still in the writing process. So, do yeah. you guys need any help with your movie? We have a lot of help. Um, we have, there's about... Like where to contact you and all that? Um, yeah, you can contact our director, Christian, at... I can't remember what the email was. I am so sorry. It's cool. Okay, like, um... It's a contact page here. Rise of the Galiax movie at gmail.com? At gmail.com, yeah. We're looking for animators, possibly writers. I haven't been in contact with the director. I'm not sure... I have some on the back burner ready to jump on it in case he needs help. But kind of just send an email if you would like to help at all. Just send it to Rise of the Alex movie at gmail.com. Awesome. Okay, we'll put that in the show notes. So if you want to email on over, 
put in your effort and help out with this, uh, put in your effort, contribute what you can to the rise of the Galiax, just head on over to the show notes, find that email, and send them what you can do. Are there any prerequisites? Has it anything you're particularly looking for? Oh, last time I checked, just the animators, so... Okay, cool. So I'm going to move the question to Dan. Do you have any questions? Um, basically, yeah. The kind of idea of having Rise of the Galiax is um, we're dealing with the most powerful... Okay, I hope that's not too much spoiler in this. I mean, this is what's published. So we're dealing with the most powerful thing in Equestria right here. So sort of like this, do you kind of foresee this movie in any way? I mean, you already stated that you, you don't want it to interfere with... Um, the current storyline of the show, but do you see it being a canon breaker in a way like that? Um, possibly. I don't know, because I don't know how, like with our sister film, not really sister film, but I'm just using the saying because it's the only came to my mind at the moment. Journey of the Spark? Mm-hmm. Um, what about it? Yeah. I don't know if, like, people from the show are know that's happening or not, you know? I'm sure that uh, that people are uh, quite aware of it because it's pretty well publicized. It is pretty well publicized. We're not that well publicized, but we're, we're, we're getting there. We're, we're getting. There. I mean, your poster is on Derpy Hoops News right below the one for Journey of the Spark, and of course, Double Rainbow. Oh my goodness, it is. <laughs> yeah, it's there. I saw the I saw the poster it's there. Oh my god. So Derpy Hoops. <laughs> it's on the left news side. To me. <laughs> I, I don't go to Derby Who's that much. I'm more Equestria Daily occasionally. Who is your really promoter? Don't you very fast, that's the thing. Who is your fast. movie promoter? Um, <laughs> I, I guess me. <laughs> I don't think we have that job assigned, but I seem to be doing it the most, so I guess it's me. Yay! Now go to Derby <laughs> News and see. <laughs> I'm just being mean, sorry. So, uh, well... Dad, any more questions? Come on, you have... Yeah, yeah I do, I do, I do. It's just that um, the whole idea of uh, having something like a Galax is quite interesting. So what got the whole thing started? You know, Was it an idea to do a movie first or did this storyline come into somebody's head and start boiling about because I know how this can actually get to people. When you have an idea for a story, it boils so hard that you either fanfic it or make a movie out of it. Honestly, I think Christian is... He's a director and he's just... Oh my gosh, he's just... He's just a genius with writing. He really is. He can make... He does so much good work. And he's probably going to call me once he hears this and be like, oh my god, I love you, man. But, I mean, he really is just amazing. And I, I've i always admired people that can make stories like that. Because I can sometimes do it, but I have to be in like the right mindset. And I think he just came up with this really good story and really wanted to do something with it. And he got some people on board, and he got me, he got some more people, and then eventually it started actually doing things. Mm-hmm. I see that the project has gathered a lot of momentum, so in particular, how did he find you? I think he might have found me when I was... Because I, I can't really remember, because it was just like... I had been doing way back when I was just still in the summer. I had been vectoring for like a month, maybe. And I was doing requests and everything, because I'm like, hey, people were asking for it, so why not open them up and stuff? And I was doing a bunch of requests, and I'd always get notes in my DA, like, hey, could you do this request? Could you do this request? And I got one from C Chords, which was Christian Chords, who's the director, and I didn't know it at the time. And he just sent it. It was just like, hey, could you vector this poster for me? For this thing I'm doing, I'm like, oh, okay, it should be just some simple little thing, like, la di da, just do this. And then he's like, and I'm like, yeah, sure. And then he's like, oh, okay, let me, send, what's your email? I'll send you the info packet. I'm like, info packet? I thought this was just a little thing. <laughs> I open up the email, I'm reading this packet, I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, this is really good. Oh, the message was self destructed five seconds. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is way, way, way bigger than I thought it was going to be. And then uh, I have... Then I vectored the poster that's just in my gallery. It's just called Rise of the Galley X. You'll probably find it in the uh, little subcategory I have in my gallery. Yep, I'm looking at it now. Um, I did that... I don't know how long it took me because I didn't 
I don't time myself when I vector because I don't think about it. Did you do it in but, a day or over a matter of um, I think I did it in like maybe two days, three. Okay. I might have just pulled an all nighter and did like two thirds of it. Wow. I can't remember. But I've I went back and redid it several times. Like the one on the site right now has to be the first draft. But this is the uh, the one on my gallery is the final draft. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> oh, the word final draft. I mean the pic- the picture I'm looking at now, the poster. Um, you've yeah. done a really good job because I'm looking at the black and white sketch of it right now, and it looks oh okay. And coloring it is going to be really hard, and you did a really good job on it. Thank you. I mean, the, yeah. the cinematic is very promising, really. Yeah. I don't know if it's because I have something for Cadence, but I think it's really good. <laughs> so, um, who did the animatics again? Um, the animatics, the drawings were done by my good friend Joshua Whitehouse, who's on DeviantArt. He's Joey White H. Uh, yeah, I see him here, yeah. He's he's really really talented artist, but he's he he says it all the time. I I failed English, so my grammar is really bad. <laughs> oh, this guy! I've seen his art on EQD before, and he does comics too. Awesome. Okay, so the, do the creators of the show, by any chance, um, have you contacted them, or do they know about this project? Um, we have not been in contact with anyone from the actual show as of yet. Um, we might be doing it soon. Oh. I'm not you sure. You think they might already know? They might. I'm not actually sure. I'll have to check that out because I'm, along with being the recently discovered film promoter, <laughs> <laughs> I'm also the uh, the unofficial guy who gets everyone onto the project and, you know, kind of gets them together and everything. Huh. Okay, cool, cool. So how far would you say you are in the movie like go for a percentage um percentage wise 10% mm, okay I feel yeah I and mean, that's all in writing right yes in, in the animatic and we have I think we have some of the score done I'm not sure I'm not sure how much I can say okay. if I get yelled at whatever <laughs> well, 10% sounds about right with everything yeah. you're doing I'm looking at the cast and crew here and you've got almost everyone um, set for recording except for Rarity and well, looks here Rarity so if uh, somebody wants to try out for voice acting where where should they do it? Same email? Yeah, probably email or I mean if you really want you can contact me on Twitter and I'll just I don't know I'll just go into the Skype chat room and be like hey guys I found this person what should I do? <laughs> oh, that's, that's probably not very official business attire, but I'm new to this, so I have an excuse. Oh, okay, cool. Because uh, the only character I see here is Rarity, and she's in question mark, and that's for shame. Why nobody want to try out for Rarity? Um, but Rarity's voice is hard to get. It, it really is. Tabitha I mean, Saint Germain, I think, in my personal opinion, is the most talented voice actor on the show. I trust. Oh, she really. I, I, I agree with that. Yes, uh, you were saying, Red? Um, I think we might might have one of the current VAs that might be able to do a pretty good rarity. I don't know, because I've never heard her do it. So, But I have word from... You know, I'm just going to use their names, because... Christian? I don't know who I'm talking about. <laughs> um, Jen McGregor, Jen who does Princess, Princess Celestia. <laughs> I've heard from Hannah Mae, who does Luna. I've heard from her that she could do a pretty good, pretty good rarity. Mm. So, if you can do Luna, you could do rarity because Tabitha did the voice for those two. Yeah. Oh no 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 no. Um, I heard from Hannah Mae, who does Luna, that Jen can do a pretty good rarity. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. This is interesting. <laughs> you should get into contact with that one from uh, Friendship's Witchcraft, Jenny Nicholson. She's very good as well. I haven't... She does, I think, all of them. <laughs> because Friendship with Witchcraft is kind of like a budget production, so one voice actor, every pony. <laughs> but still, awesome show. And she sings. 
True, true, true. I don't really watch French witchcraft, to be honest with you. Sorry? I don't, I don't really watch French witchcraft. I, I'm going to get, get so much stuff thrown at me for saying this, but I don't really like it. Oh, it's, it's not your. We understand. It's your. It's not your kind of humor. Then it's cool. Well, it's, it's, not, it's not. that it's like not my kind of humor. I just feel like, I feel like they're trying too hard on the humor. Like they're trying, you know, they're trying to make it too much like a show. That's not coming off as a parody. You know. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, some people like it because it's not a parody, and some people like parodies. Like, um, I'm gonna say, Yu Gi Oh Bridge because it's a total parody. <laughs> There's yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge. I didn't know that. Oh, there is. There is. I heard it's really good. I've never had the time to sit down and watch it, but I I watch as I... Uh, never mind. Come on. Like, come on. It? What's the show? Camaraderie is... Camaraderie is Supernatural, that one. Yeah. yeah I, I've seen them, too, and I think they're good. Um, another, <laughs> another really funny one. It doesn't make any sense at all, but it's so funny. Is um the Mentally Advanced series... Oh yeah, <laughs> I've watched that. I'm at a loss. What's going on? <laughs> My name is Fluttershy. That one. Oh, I like. I got no idea. Maybe link it to me later. I don't know. Yeah, I, I I used to watch that between hiatus because of no content. It's just crap stuff. Whatever crap people are putting up. Yeah. That that is just so funny. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. So um then. Yeah. So in the creation of this uh, Rise of the Gadiax. Um, I'm sure that, you know, there would have been ideas that would have been rejected for maybe the title. But what I, what really bugs me is where the word Galiax come from. Because um, if you search Galiax on Google, you will see something about this movie pop up within the first three results. So it's like, this made up specifically for this movie? I honestly don't know. I, it never crossed my mind to ask that question, honestly, because... I work, I have a little project that's like a child to me, but I'll get into that later. I make up names and stuff all the time, so I just thought it was just like another name. So. Okay. Okay, I did a Google yeah, search I... and Galax is a community, eh, commute in the gears department in South, Southern France. Yeah, that sounds like a French word. Looks like a town in France. Oh, wow. It'll be like rise of then it'll be like rise of galley accident. What the heck? Oh my! Some, and the population is about one hundred and seventy-four people. Yeah, they're probably one hundred and seventy-four doomsday scientists working on something <laughs> there. Oh boy! Yeah, that sounds something like rise of galley rise of galley <laughs> okay. Like of the apes, but small scale. I didn't even know there was an actual sound called that. <laughs> I didn't know too. Well, yep. we are teaching people stuff on this show. <laughs> <laughs> okay then, so uh, that wraps up my questions about the show. Now, why Red Pair? Oh, the ever-present question. Um, it's really like some like really dinky little story. Um, so way back in seventh grade, I was doing a Christmas card for my parents. And you know how like... Um, the cards on the backs, there's like, you know, the logo and everything of like the card company, like Hallmark or whatever. And, yeah. um, I was like, oh, I should do like a little, little thing for it, you know? And I was thinking my, all I had was a red pen and I was thinking to myself, what, I gotta think of like something that's like really inventive and new and I'm like what's a weird color and I'm like it has to be it'll be fruit and I'm like what fruit isn't normally red and I'm like bananas no that just means they're bad <laughs> apples no. there'll be so apples, many implications if you took bananas <laughs> um, red oranges that just sounds stupid um, <laughs> and then I'm like pears I do love pears, and I'm like, that's it, red pear, it's short, and I like it, and that was that, then fast forward, like, one or two years, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to just start a DeviantArt account, what should I do, what should the name be, and I'm like, and then my desk is an atrocity, so there's papers everywhere, 
And I'm like, uh, oh, red pair. I'll do that. I haven't done that in a while. And I guess people know about me now. And then that came became my name. Awesomeness. Became a red pair incorporated or something like that. Right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, okay, um, I see your OC here and... It- is I see it on the cloud. Are you a Pegasus by any chance? Yes, I am. Ah, so could you tell me more about your OC? Does he have um, a job? Um, honestly, it's just me as a pony. There is nothing inventive. There is no interesting backstory. There is no, like, cool thing that That's he does. History. Yeah, he's just me as a pony. Oh, awesome. <laughs> he does have a name, though. It's not Red Pear, because it doesn't make sense. Who would name their child Red Pear? But it doesn't make any sense, because there are plenty of weird names in the show already. Huh. Because I see here Feather Whips looks like it. Yeah, Feather Wisp. Oh, so that's the name of your character? Yep. Hmm. So why Feather Wisp? I honestly don't know. That, was it like, you know, you're taking a kind of a name that the show, the, the style of name that the show uses and throw one on kind of thing? Yeah. Well, actually, I had done a, when I was unfamous and just doing things for, like, a friend, a friend of mine was trying to write a fanfic, and uh, it was, oh, it was so good. Um, it was supposed to be, like, Elemental Rebirth, like, it's oh so long after the elements of harmony have died or something and there's a new threat or something and they have to overthrow it and then there are these new elements of harmony and stuff like that and it was really really cool and he wasn't doing anything with it and I was so mad about it and we eventually just dropped it all together because it was ruining our friendship Oh. and friendship is the most important thing yep true true friendship is magic indeed it is. <laughs> but, yeah, I came up with it because I had one of the characters was who was going to be the new loyalty. Her name was Cloud Wisp. If you dig through, she's in there. Um, she's the yellow one with the... Yeah, the uh, yellow one with the Spitfire mane red. and wavy mane and tail. Yeah. Oh, she's awesome. adorable. Awesome. I should draw her. Plug her in the show. Make her as a background character. Yeah, like how Sip C had that moment. Oh, damn, that, that's awesome, man. Yeah. That was so cool. Funny thing, I, I I think she didn't even know that she was in there. Yeah, there was something like that that happened where she didn't know and then like, wait, what? I mean, really? Oh, huh. that's awesome. I was watching Brony's React, the one that uh, AC Race Best does on YouTube, and uh, all of them who were reacting is like, wait, is that Simpson? <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Have you been to any pony conventions? Yes, I was at Canterlot Gardens. Ooh, mm. that's interesting. Nearby to where you are, right? It's like eight minutes away. Wow! <laughs> convention Seriously, eight minutes away! <laughs> I'm so jelly right now. There are people who drove like how many hours to get there? Yeah, I'm like, it's like eight minutes from my house. <laughs> Just take like a light, nice long walk. <laughs> So how was Cantaloupe Gardens? For being my first actual convention, because Charcom was just like a, eh, it was like, it was it was a good convention, but I mean, it was like, not really a convention, like with panels of like, voice, voices and stuff. Mm-hmm. But um, overall, it was an amazing experience. So because um, from what we've seen of Cantaloupe Gardens, it's basically the panels, 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 and more panels. That's what we can see here. So, um, yeah. So, but how's the environment over there? Like the artist alley, the booths, and whatnot. Could could you tell us more about that? Um, the artist alley compared to with with Trakan, it was like one little room because it was at the Ohio U- the uh, Ohio Union down at Ohio State University. So it was like this little tiny room, probably like. Twice the size of mine, which is like... Oh, I don't even know. Let's just say in a small room. Yeah. It's, it's a lot, it was a lot more room. It was like six times the size of that. Mm. And it was... Um, Pix 
Hazel Kitties was there, and I seen her at Dracon, along with Toxic Mario. Oh. Have um, you met the are... director for Rise of the Galaxy? What's his name again? I'm so, so sorry. Uh, Christian... Oh, I, I am very bad with that last word. Christian I'm even worse than Quartz. Quartz, okay. Have you met him in person? Um, I have not met him in person. He lives in New Jersey. Um, he didn't come to Cadillac Gardens because I think he's too far away. Yes, no money. Yeah. But uh, that's actually where most of my money went because I bought a $65 plushie, a scarf, some goggles, and uh, a shirt. Which plushie was it? Firefly. <gasps> Ooh, awesome. Ooh, um, Firefly. Who made it? Um, oh, I can't remember. Oh, she's so far away, too. Oh, it's cool, it's cool. She's staring at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Like, oh. So, did you make any new friends there while you were at the Cantaloupe Gardens? Ooh, yes, I did. Um, if anyone that was listening had been following me on Twitter before at all, you would have known that, uh, I was... I would occasionally tweet at Calpain because yes. during Everfree Northwest, he couldn't be there because he was moving to Athens, Ohio, which is three hours south of me. Huh. Um, and he couldn't go because of that reason. And I got him a picture for it to like kind of cheer him up because that's like what I do, I guess, apparently. I don't know. I just like to make people happy because sadness is awful. But I did him a little picture, and he's like, oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much. I'm like, oh, it's nothing, man. And uh, I heard he was going to be a Camelot Arts. I'm like, oh, I should totally give him that sketch. And I did, and, like, the last day, I hung out with him, Fee, and PK, that are both parts of the Equestria Daily staff that were there at the time. And um, Ace, Essential, he does, oh, what does he do, what does he do? Um, he does, he's the art director for the Fallout Equestria something or other. I think it's the audio Order play. I can't um, yes, I think that's it. Oh, cool. But, yeah, I met him there too. And then we were Skype, then we're on Skype and everything. And it's, it's really awesome to know people like that. I honestly didn't, I didn't think I'd ever meet them. Wow, awesome. Seriously, that, that sounds awesome. I also, uh. I met, I mentioned her earlier, Hannah, Hannah May, who does uh, the voice of Luna. Luna and everything, and Jen McGregor, who was also there, and uh, they had a panel for Silly Philly, and I knew she was on the Galax project, I'm like, oh my gosh, I should totally meet you, and after a series of miscommunications on Twitter, um, we finally met up, Hog talked a little bit, then we left went home and slept for like five hours oh cool he's like hey I'm at the Starbucks there's a lot of Starbucks which one <laughs> I can just imagine the chaos you can in Singapore because there's a there's a there's a 7-Eleven in Singapore every like 500 meters <laughs> oh god no well sounds awesome so um, did you go to any panels while you were there oh I went to I obviously went to much like any panel I could on day one. No, wait, I wasn't there day one because I had marching band, so I was only there briefly on Friday, but Saturday was the main day. I mean, I couldn't miss that day. So I went to the Silly Fiddly panel where I saw, yeah, I forgot their names, Jen and Hannah, and uh, I actually asked a question while I was there on the video speaking. On the panel? And yeah, on the oh, panel cool. video. I'm, I'm the guy that I'm the guy that uh, stands up and uh, I'm the one that's like, "How I'm a vector artist? How do I get out there?" And then I also called Jenna and Hannah stupid because Ali told me to on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! But yeah, I went to that one. I went to the voice actor panel. So you that got pretty- so you got to saw Terra Strong live as Twilight. Yes. Were you surprised? I was surprised. Because at the script reading panel, when, uh, he didn't realize, like, on the video, everyone was 
doesn't know where she is, and then there's a bunch of cheering, and she's like coming through the audience. The little line. Yeah, um, yeah. She was like, on the video, everyone's like really cheering at one point, and then she, you see her walk through the aisle. And what happened was she was actually sitting in the audience. Awesome. And the whole time. The, yeah, like the whole pre show. It was so weird because. Nobody noticed? No one noticed. And what she the was. Hell? It was it was so funny because my friends and I were there. We're just like one of the actors is on the panel, like really having up, like oh my god, where's Tara? I'm like, oh, she's gonna come in through that door. And then we just hear everyone cheering, and we're like, what's going on? And then we see her like walk through the aisle, and we're like, what? And we look behind us, and there's an empty, and there are two empty seats where she was sitting. I'm like, oh, I don't know this. Like directly oh, behind oh, me. Like, oh, Tara is best troll. <laughs> So, um, she did the script reading panel first, and then the voice actor panel? Um, no, she did the, uh, voice actor panel. The script reading panel was... Oh, man, I can't even remember. Later then, um, because, um, I would imagine that people would know who she was by then. Yeah, but the thing is, she was so well, well done. I mean, no one, no one expected that to happen. Huh, uh, I guess people didn't get a chance to... Um, watch the voice actor panel. But how was the script reading panel? Because I watched it a few times and my god, was that awesome. Oh my gosh, that was the... I am so glad I went to that panel because that panel was just... That was hilarious. I mean, I was sitting there cheering whenever like they'd say... Like, when uh, when they had Twilight is Christopher Walken, <laughs> I just about died because I thought that was the funniest thing. Oh, I just love Westcott as snails. Oh no, sorry, Snips. Yeah, let's get Snips. <laughs> oh, okay, um, I think we um, kept you long enough and we're talking about things that are not related to your thing already. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that was our guest, Red Pair. Uh, thank you for being on, Red. Hope you don't mind us being derpy and all. <laughs> not a problem. Okay. And moving on to the next topic is shoutouts. So my shoutout is to you, Red Pair. Thank you for being on the show and being such an awesome guest. Oh, thank you. It's, it was fun talking to you, and we should do more of this talking thing. I like talking. Me too. I do it every I'm week. <laughs> and also my next shoutout goes to Five Iron Brony um, from Brony Time. Um, five, the package is here, and oh my god, that was so awesome. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And then, do you have any shoutouts to give out? Yeah, I also want to shout out to Five Higher Brony. That drawing is adorable. Yep, um, I'll Go try and check out Norman's Instagram and you can see that beautiful picture of Derby he drew on the envelope. It is so cute. Yep. And Red, do you have any shoutouts you want to give out to? Yes, I have. My main one has to be to the whole cast that I'm working with on Galax. You guys are just... Oh my god, you guys are just the best people and I owe... I just, you guys just make my life so much more happier, happier, and I can't thank you guys enough. Um, second shout out has to be to Christian because honestly, man, I wouldn't be anywhere if it wasn't for you. I mean, you really, you really jump started my career as like a vector artist, and I love you for that. And then my final shout out is a double shout out, but I'm just gonna lump it in one um, for Alley and Bass because you two are just, you guys are just so awesome and. I, I know I say this to you all the time, but you two are like the older brother and sister I've never had. I mean, you helped me through so much stuff, and I just can't thank you guys enough. Just keep doing what you do, because you're amazing at it. One last thing, actually. This is just a note, not really a shout-out. I mean, you can call it that, but uh, this is to all the people who are on the organizing board of Winter Moon and Enter, the, con- the convention in the U.S. that recently got cancelled, and... Stay strong, people. I know you put a lot of effort into your work. And, um, of course, don't worry. You'll soon pay off somewhere else. Maybe not a convention, but you all have the best interest at heart. And I'm sure that, you know, you'll pay off sometime. Don't worry. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Don't give up. Keep on doing what you're doing. Even though you fail now, it doesn't mean you should stop trying. So those are the shout-outs. Thank you, guys. And if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at show at gmail.com. And you can also reach us on Twitter. The show is at show, and I'm at Norman Sanzo. I'm at Sipiki, S-T-P-I-N-K-I-E. And Red, do you have Twitter? Um, yes, I do. 
I am at Red Pear Inc. I am the icon is a red pear that I took a picture of, made an icon, then ate. Oh, do <laughs> they have red pear inc? Not I N K. They have I-N-C. they have red pears like real red pears. Yeah, I had no idea. Huh. Wow, that's interesting. I was at the grocery. I was at the grocery store and it's just like red pears. I'm like, huh? I'll have to eat one of these now. Awesome. Okay. But anyway, but then the China pears because some China pears are red, reddish. I, I think they they might be China pears. I'm not sure. Oh, it's made China, man. You don't want to know what comes out of that country. <laughs> <laughs> it could be lead paint. They just paint it like that. Oh. <laughs> anyway. Um, also subscribe and rate us on iTunes and also like our Facebook page links will be provided in the show notes so that's it for this episode Um, I've been Norman Sanzo I've been Daniel Anthony I've been Red Pear and we'll see you next week bye We here at Sweet Apple Lake are sure do like making new friends. Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Oh, come on, you'll like it that much, I know. Don't you want to go down to that sweet old place? They got apples that are pleased the entire pony race. A short trot ride. This big old farm is where I make my home. Got more history here than you could ever know. It's always green and peachy here on the sweet old farm. Never no cause for alarm. We sell apples by the barrel, by box, or even by cow. Ask us, do you buck them all? I'll tell you. Yup. My granny Smith found his apple jam And the beginnings of Ponyville with the old apple clam Outside of the forest of the apple free Where dumb things can always ever be She barely escaped them timber walls chasing her Luckily she was a pretty darn fast runner From the same old place, Sweet Apple Acres.
so um, <laughs> there's not much about Inkscape really because it's, it's basically the free version of Illustrator. It's almost the same. Hold on a second. Can you hear the lightning and thunder in the back of the house? Because it's pretty bloody loud. Is it coming through the mic? No. You're good. Okay, help it. Oh, God. I'm going to wake up to a flood tomorrow morning or something like that. Yay. Not very fun. <laughs> Your matches will just be floating down the street. And then you can sing, row, row, row your boat. I sleep on a bunk bed, so if my mattress is floating down on the street, I'm in deep trouble. 